السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعه بإحسان إلى يوم الدين بعد اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصل عليه في الآخرين وصل عليه في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين My dear brothers in Islam and our sisters at home I greet you with the greeting of Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you back to the to our continuation of the program Men Around the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our continuation of this uh, series of Men Around the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have spoken the, uh, this far about few of the sahabas of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we have mentioned how why we, we have to why are we sharing all this information? Why do we have to discuss about the men that we, we do not even know? But these are the men that uh, brought us this beautiful deen of Islam up until it reached to us. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Through them, through the barakah, through the hard work, through the hardships they went through, they tried to, to, uh, to change the world for the better up until we managed to receive this beautiful deen of Al-Islam. And so today, inshallah, we're going to carry on with our story of Sayyidina Talha bin Ubaidullah. Talha bin Ubaidullah was one of the, uh, the early converts of Islam. The early Sahabas who accepted Islam at the time when Islam was still very, very uh, at a growing uh, phase. When Rasulullah sallallahu was, was still uh, calling people individually, secretly to his close, uh, closest people and his, his closest people, those who accepted Islam, they also tried to, you know, to give uh, da'wah, to give this great news of Islam to their, to their families, to their friends, to their uh, closest uh, of neighbors. And so Talha ibn Ubaidullah, it happened that he got his uh, conversion, meaning uh, acceptance, uh, accepting, I mean, he got his message from one of his cousins, who was none other than uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Remember when we have mentioned that uh, when Talha bin Ubaidullah, when he went for, for his trade, for his business in Syria, he was told about a man who will come and announce that he is a prophet of Allah and who was also uh, mentioned in the previous, in the previous uh, messages, in the previous scriptures, that there will be a man who is going to come and his name is going to be Muhammad, the, the praise one. So when he came back to Mecca, he had to, you know, Ask the people around Mecca, hey, is there anybody that, you know, has mentioned that he's a, he's a prophet of Allah? So the people around him, they had to tell him that, you know what? Yes, of course, there is this man here, you know him, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Remember, whenever you hear his name, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, don't get tired, don't get tired, inshallah. It is only for our own goodness, inshallah, tabarakallah. We shouldn't be among those people who are stingy. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I remind you with the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, um, the most stingy person is the one who when my name has been mentioned and he does not send a salam upon me sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so let us inshallah by all time always whenever we hear the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam imagine when, when the name of the most beloved one let's leave Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aside let's leave Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one side but let's take the people that you close, uh, you 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 hold so close to your heart. Whenever they, they they are mentioned in front of you, you will always want to you know give attention and hear what they, what people are saying about them. And if they're saying something khair, yani, you, you know you will smile, even if you don't smile, but you know you feel good in your heart. Subhanallah. But this is just an ordinary human being. You know, if if maybe they say something uh, bad about them, you'll always try by all means to to defend them. Why? Because they're too close to you. Now here we are not talking about those people that we keep in our in our pockets or those people that we have in our heart, the ordinary people that they benefit us only in this dunya. We're talking about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that when his name is been mentioned, imagine even Allah subhanahu wa taala, he sends his sal his salutations, including the, mal the malaika. So it is a command from Allah subhanahu wa taala to always send salutations to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So nonetheless, when Zubair uh, radiallahu an, uh, when Talha, when, when Talha radiallahu an returned back and uh, he inquired on the people, 
that is there anyone who just came out and say okay he's a muslim uh, he's a he's a he's a prophet of allah and they told him yes it is muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the son of abdullah he just claimed that he is a prophet of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so i think because he, they, he was known he was famous in the community he had to go to his to his closest one you know just to find out more what it was all about nonetheless so that's how sayyidina talha ibn abdullah he accepted his islam and uh, we have mentioned that at the time, people who were receiving the much torture, it was those people who are the, oh, from the poor, uh, poor backgrounds and the, the slaves. Those who accepted Islam. Nonetheless, inshallah, we carry on. So, at Badr, at, at uh, Ghazat Badr, in the first Badr, in the, in the first battle, Rasulullah fought with the with the non-Muslims, with the uh, with the Quraysh, with the idol worshippers. Talha, we have mentioned Talha, he did not participate on that battle. He did not participate. For what reason? We have mentioned that uh, Talha, he did not uh, participate on that battle because he was also given a mission by, by who? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to go, uh, you know, as a secret agent, a secret agent to go spy on the, the caravan, one of the caravans of, of who? One of the uh, caravans of Abu Sufyan. Remember the main reason why Rasulullah came out with the Sahabas, came out with the Sahabas from from Medina to come in and attack the caravan was mainly to take what the Quraysh people they have taken from the from from the belongings of the Prophet, of the people of of Makkah and meaning from the Muslimin. So when the Muslimin migrated from Makkah to Medina, they left all their belongings in Mac in Makkah. So the Quraysh they you know. They saw that as a chance, so they took over everything that the Sahabas has left behind. So these are the people that we are talking about, subhanAllah. People who gave out their life for the love of Allah and for the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who amongst us who can do that? You know, leave your, your family, leave your, be uh, your belongings, be leaving behind your businesses, you know, your successful uh, businesses. For what? Only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only for the sake of Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when Az-Zubair returned back, he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, is there any share of me? He said, don't worry, Ya Talha. Don't worry, Ya Talha. Subhanallah. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, what about the reward? I'm not worried about the worldly materials, you know, the booty of war. Remember, Talha was well off, alhamdulillah. He was a wealthy a wealthy Sahabi, Subhanallah. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given him the the intelligence, you know, of 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 winning, of gaining more profits from his businesses, Subhanallah. And we'll discuss more, Inshallah, as time goes, on how he he spent his wealth, Inshallah, Tabarakallah. Now comes the battle of Uhud, Subhanallah. What can we say about about Ghazwat Uhud? When the time of Ghazwa to Uhud, you know, everyone knows about it. Okay, we know Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu, he passed away on that day. He was killed on that day. But remember, yes, he was killed in the eyes of the people of the dunya. But remember, the shuhada, they're never dead. They are never dead. Bal ihya'un inda rabbihim yurzakun. Remember, the, the martyrs, the shuhada, they are never dead in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are alive, been provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll mention also uh, later on on how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why these people, they are protected, inshallah, tabarakallah, as time goes, inshallah. So when, uh, when Ghazat Uhud came, Talha ibn Ubaidullah, he was among the most, yani, the most people, the most of the Sahabas who, who tried by all means to defend Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have mentioned before, Sayyidina Sa'ad ibn, uh, Sa ibn Ubaid. We have mentioned about uh, Sayyidina, um, yani, the, first, the, first, yani, the first messenger to the people of Medina. Who was he? Mus'ab ibn Umair. We have mentioned on how he defended, he also tried to defend Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, you know, leaving this world here, you know, with, with shame, thinking that yeah, maybe I haven't done, yeah, I haven't done enough. Subhanallah. These are the people who put themselves in a, in a, you know, in an age of what? They were ready for anything. They were ready for anything because they remembered the pro, I mean, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa taala and the, prophet, the promise 
of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Talha, whenever the battle of Uhud is mentioned or was mentioned in the, in the presence of, uh, of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu will say, Dhaka yawmu talha, Dhaka yawmu talha, that means that day was for talha. We, no discussion. End of the story. Why? It was because of how he tried to, to defend Rasulullah sallam. It was because on how he put his life on the edge of, you know, in between of life, life and death. Of course, he, he did what, he did all it could, or, or he did all he, can, he could to defend Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why when, when, when Ghazwa Uhud was mentioned in, the, in front of Abu Bakr Allah, he will never want to argue with anybody. He will always say, Dhaka yawmu talha. Inshallah, when we come back from, uh, from the break, we'll continue on how he actually strived on this path of, uh, of, shah- of shaheed, you know, of becoming a shaheed. Although he did not uh, die on that day, but inshallah, we're going to discuss more when we come back from the from the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you back uh, to our programming around the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with you is Brother Asadullah Jabir Piri. So we were, we were discussing on a matter of Sayyidina Talha ibn Ubadullah. How, how much he longed, he longed for the shahada. How long he uh, how much he tried to, to defend Islam and of course to defend the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On this day, he, it is the day that he, he earned the praise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said about him? There are so many ahadith that speaks about how Talha ibn Ubaidullah he fought on that day. But one of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man arada مَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَنْظُرَ إِلَىٰ شَهِيدٍ يَمْشِي عَلَىٰ الْأَرْضِ فَلْيَنْظُرَ إِلَىٰ طَلْحَ Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Whosoever wants to see a walking shah- uh, shaheed, a walking martyr on the surface of the, uh, of, of the world, then he should look at who? Talha. Why? And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَوْجَبَ الْيَوْمْ طَلْحَ أَوْجَبَ الْيَوْمْ طَلْحَ That means today, Talha, he has found it. What is it that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is speaking about? Jannah, yani, Jannah it has become fard upon Talha radiallahu anhu. That is what Rasulullah said, whosoever wants to see a shaheed walking on this path of the, uh, on this surface of the, of the earth, then he should look at Talha ibn Ubaidullah, subhanallah. And whenever we mention Talha ibn Ubaidullah, maybe you have, you have noticed that I twisted my, my tongue, twisted into someone's name, subhanallah. So whenever you mention uh, uh, Talha ibn Ubaidullah, you will also mention the name of Zubair. Why? We shall mention insha'Allah, tabarakallah, later, later on insha'Allah. So on that day, Rasulullah sallam narrating to us saying, I could not see, I could not uh, be left alone except that I see on my right side Jibreel alayhi salam supporting me and I see on my left side Talha ibn Ubaidullah supporting me. Subhanallah. He, he is one of the, he is the Sahabi who when the arrows were coming to us, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when the arrows were coming to the to the blessed uh, to the blessed uh, body of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Talha Talha ibn Ubaidullah, he will he will stop them, he will catch them with his own with his own hands. It, that it is even mentioned that uh, Talha ibn Ubaidullah, he was this man who he wa- who was uh, cut off, meaning some of his fingers were were cut. From 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 the wounds of that of that day, from you know catching the arrows and his foot was also cut. Subhanallah, this is the man who when when now Rasulullah uh, was lying on the other side because remember this is the day when Rasulullah was almost killed. He was almost killed. This is the day Rasulullah he bled. This is the day Rasulullah. He lost, it is mentioned in, in other narrations that Rasulullah this day, he lost one of his Mubarak uh, tooth. Subhanallah. And when people thought that Rasulullah was killed, Talha ibn Abdullah was there to make sure that Rasulullah he was put in a safer, safer place. With all his wounds, Subhanallah, it is mentioned that Talha ibn Abdullah, 
there was no part, there's no portion of the, on his body where there was no wound, the way he was not bleeding. Why? Because he was all direction. He was defending Rasulullah from all angles, from all directions. With that, with that, he managed to carry Rasulullah on his back and towards just up the hill to protect Rasulullah And to that effect, he even fainted. He even uh, went, uh, fell unconscious. When now uh, Sayyidina Abu Bakr returned, because they were, they were also fighting on the other side, a bit far from the Rasulullah So when they came now to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, don't worry about me, but go see your companion. Meaning, that's al bin Abdullah. That he, he lost his, uh, uh, most of, uh, he, he lost a lot of blood on, on that day. So that's why he was weak and uh, he fainted on that, on that day, on that specific day. Uhud. Uhud is the place that, you know, normally when people now, nowadays they go and visit Medina, Alhamdulillah, we go there, everything is mashallah, sunny. But the history of what Uhud carries, subhanAllah, the people who walked on the Uhud, subhanAllah, Rasulullah he would go there with uh, some of the Sahabas. And, you know, out of excitement, the, the, the Uhud, I mean, the mountain, mountain Uhud, it will shake. And Rasulullah don't you know that in, on, on, you just say, okay, be patient or calm down with Uhud. Don't you know that on top of you, there's a, uh, there's a messenger of Allah and there's, there's two shahidain, I mean, there's two martyrs with you. SubhanAllah, Uhud. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, put us or write us among those people who will always visit Makkah uh, Makarrama, so Makkah and Medina. So that we are able to see all these historical areas, historical uh, places, so that we can also uh, go and what salute the people of uh, of Uhud. Our Rasulullah has commanded us to go and visit Uhud for what? So that we salute those people. Why? Because our Rasulullah said, "Your salutations are not rejected, but rather they are heard by them." Remember, I've mentioned before that the shuhada they are not dead. The shuhada, they are not dead. The prophets and the shuhada, the shuhada, they are not dead, but they are alive in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have been fed. How can a dead person uh, benefit anything from food? Our Rasulullah then said, this day is the day, of, uh, this day, is the day where uh, Talha bin Ubaidullah, he found his Jannah. Of course, he lived later, I mean, he lived longer uh, even after Rasulullah even after Sayyidina Abu Bakr he lived even in the, in the time of Sayyidina Umar he lived in the time of Sayyidina Uthman ibn, uh, Uthman ibn Affan he also lived in the time of uh, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib that is the time when he, he passed away from this from this world both of them, him and Tal- uh, Zubair they, were, they lived up until that moment now, why did Rasulullah or why do we mention always mention at al and al Zubair? It is mentioned, mentioned that Rasulullah he said, Talha wa Zubair jaraya fi fil jannah. Yani, Talha and Zubair, these are my companions, these are my neighbors in jannah. So, whenever, inshallah, we are in jannah visiting Rasulullah, we will, we will pass through. Either Talha or Az Zubair's house, insha'Allah, tabarakallah, before we reach Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reward of the of uh, give us the reward of the shuhada, insha'Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala before we leave this world. Talha bin Ubaidullah. I've mentioned that he lived even up until Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu. In that moment, when, when, when uh, Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan was killed, before the fitna of, before the fitna of Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anh, what happened is that he even placed his own son, you know, just to make sure that uh, Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anh, he was safe. Then later on, he, he, of course, he traveled. Uh, Sayyidina Talha bin Ubaidullah, he did not pass away in, uh, in Medina or not even in Mecca. He rather passed away in, in the places uh, in Basra, in somewhere in Iraq. 
that is where we, we can find his um, his tomb, his uh, his grave, insha'Allah, tabarakallah. So how did he die, subhanAllah? How did he pass away? He passed away, he was actually killed, whether I should say by mistake, or, or we should say, in a, just in a, for us to understand. When Sayyidina Talha bin Abdullah, you know, it was him and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh, and Aisha radiallahu anh, they were together, you know, discussing on the matter on how to to, um, to pay back, uh, to revenge the death of Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anh. So they agreed, okay, inshallah, but we need to settle the matters down before, you know, so that we don't have any, uh, any fitna again. So the same people, the same people who... Uh, who brought up the fitna of Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anh, they are the same people who came and attacked the camp of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib and the camp of Sayyidina uh, Talha ibn Ubaidullah. So both sides, they thought maybe it was the camp of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh that fought with uh, the camp of Sayyidina Talha ibn Ubaidullah. Ibn Ubaidullah also, uh, uh, Talha ibn Ubaidullah also th- thought that maybe it is uh, the attack is coming from from the people of uh, Talha, meaning Talha. You also thought that the, maybe the attack was also coming from from the people of uh, from the side of Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. Subhanallah. So this is the fitna. This is the play, uh, this is this is how Sayyidina uh, Talha uh, radiallahu anhu he was he was martyred. This is how he became shaheed. On that day, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu said, "I wish I could have died." 20 years before this time, before this happened. So that is how Sayyidina Atalha ibn Ubadullah, he passed away, insha'Allah, tabarakallah. From, for our own benefit, we should always respect our, our, our Sahabas, meaning the Sahabas of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa These are the people who fought their lives, they put their lives in danger for our own, uh, for our own benefit. And insha'Allah, until we meet again, wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin, وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم سبحان ربي العز سبحان ربك رب العزة ما يصفون وسلام على المسلمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته